Hello everyone, this is Tanguru, and welcome back to another Bloodborne Bosch drawing. The last episode saw us squaring off against Father Gascoigne in an epic battle of hunters. The maddened Gascoigne transformed into a hideous beast and we were forced to put him down. He drops the Uden tomb key upon his death, giving us a way onward to the cathedral ward. From there, we had a few options as to where to go next but I thought it would make the most sense to stay on the main path and travel down to Old Yarnum. Here in the city's ruins, we uncover the full extent of the tragedy of what awaits the citizens of Yarnum should this nightmare never end. The original city of Yarnum, Old Yarnum was once a prosperous city like its predecessor until it became wrought with the baffling sickness known as Ashen Blood. The sickness swept through the city and although doctors were able to provide some short-term relief to those ravaged by it, the Ashen Blood ailment eventually triggered the spread of the beastly scourge. The patients began to transform as the red moon fell over the city, and it was quickly overrun. The game is unclear as to the specifics surrounding the Ashen Blood sickness, but like most other goings-on, it can likely be linked back to the Healing Church. We know that the Scourge of the Beast was a direct cause of the blood ministration that the Church performed on the people of Yarnum, and it's likely that the Ashen Blood was part of an early trial. Perhaps the blood they were using for ministration wasn't pure enough or contaminated by an outside source. There are signs through the city that there was more going on in Old Yarnum than just the sickness, as you can find many crucified beasts throughout the area along with a crucified version of this area's boss in a cathedral. In addition to being crucified, the beast appears to have been drained of its blood, which was likely an attempt at cleansing the impurities from it. The ritual blood on the altar may even mean that this was a sacrifice to ward off the sickness. Since the reward for clearing this area is a Thumerian chalice, I think it's likely that the ritual and also the contamination of blood might be linked to it. We find out from Germin that the holy chalices that were retrieved from the chalice dungeons beneath Yarnum were once worshipped by the people of Old Yarnum. Perhaps their use of the chalices exposed them to a disease or sickness they brought up from the dungeons which ultimately led to the Ashen Blood. In addition to the crucified beasts we see throughout the city, there are also bodies wrapped in red that can be found hanging by their feet. I've read many different theories as to what these are supposed to represent, but I think the answer can be found on one of the items we start the game with, the Hunter's Mark. This symbol of a hunter is referred to as a dangling upside down rune etched in one's mind. When you look at the mark as though it were hanging, you can make out the crude shape of a person suspended by their feet with their arms down. Given that the body's hanging in old Yarnum, appear slightly elongated, I think these were people that were afflicted by the Scourge, who were killed and strung up by the hunters sent to clean up the mess in Old Yarnum. Whenever signs of the Scourge of the Beast begin to take shape, hunters are deployed by the workshop, a secret group of hunters established to keep the beasts in check, and a secret from the rest of the population. With the city under attack, the workshop sent out a group of hunters known as the Powder Kegs, to put an end to the outbreak before it spread beyond the city. Later branded as heretics, the powder kegs had an adoration of complex designs and big booms, culminating in weapon designs that contrasted with those traditionally of the workshop. The powder kegs, bless their souls, had a motto, if a weapon ain't got kick, it just ain't worth it. And so it was, that the hunters of old Yarnum, reveling in the hunt and caught up in the euphoria, burnt the city to the ground. The powder cake hunters were afterward branded as heretics to the workshop, but with the red moon hanging low and the beasts ruling the streets, do they have any other choice than to burn it all to cinders? A few of the remnants of the powder kegs still remain in the city, but these few had a change of heart. Led by the hunter Jura, these hunters were appalled by the slaughter of the former citizens of Old Yarnum and decided to remain behind to ensure the beasts remaining could live out their days in peace. We are greeted by the voice of Jura upon entering the city 
and he warns us to turn back. If we refuse and continue on anyway, he fires down at us from his tower with a Gatling gun. It is possible to turn back and enter Old Yarnum from a back entrance at a later point in the game and befriend Jura, but this is unfortunately not the route we took this time around. As we cut down all those that stand in our path, we make our way down to the base of the city where the Church of the Good Chalice sits. It is here that the boss of the area awaits us. We find the blood-starved beast in the church, staring at the chalice on the altar. Since the people here worship the chalice, it's possible that the blood-starved beast was part of the religious group, or even a leader here in the Valley Hamlet. Clerics were said to transform into the most hideous of beasts, possibly due to the amount of unnatural blood they were exposed to, so it's likely the same for this creature. Although not a member of the healing church, he was likely part of the group that worshipped here. When we find the beast, it has been flayed with its back exposed, suggesting that there had been an attempt at removing the ashen blood from it. But this one didn't die in the process like the one in the other church. The act of expelling the tainted blood likely happened to these people before they transformed fully into beasts, so it's possible they were unable to contain this beast after it transformed. It broke free and decided to seek refuge in the church where it likely found comfort as a human. It is secluded and only attacks us when we approach, meaning it wants nothing more than to be left alone. The interesting point here is that it seems that beasts retain some sort of memory of their human selves, giving some credence to Jura's mission. The blood-starved beast and the people of Old Yarnum are just another victim to the scourge of the beasts and the acts of the healing church of Yarnum. It's easy to forget as a hunter that the beasts we cut down were once simple people who tried to make a life for themselves in Yarnum before everything fell apart. With another boss nearing completion, we now have to plan our next steps. Defeating the blood-starved beast opens a path through the cathedral ward that leads through the old abandoned workshop and back up to the grand cathedral. There, Vicar Amelia awaits. But we also have another path past the cathedral and down to Hemwick Charnel Lane, where the Witches of Hemwick await us. I usually go to Hemwick first, but I'm open to finishing the Grand Cathedral if enough people want it. Either way, let me know what boss you would like to face next, and what attire and weapons you would like to see used in the next video. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, and thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.